Hello students, my name is Vinuta Prashant. I am working as assistant professor in RYMEC Engineering College, Balari. I have 10 plus years of experience and my area of interests are Java, Python, Analog and Digital Electronics, Data Structures. Today we will be, <coughs> we'll be looking at Digital Design and Computer Organization subject. In this, the ob main objectives of this course are to demonstrate the functionality of binary logic. The first two modules will be covering regarding the analog and digital electronic subject. Then uh, the second module covers about the combinational and sequential circuits, how to design combinational and uh, sequential circuits that is what is covered in module 2. And module 3, 4, 5 will be covering about computer organization, how your computer is organized uh, using these combinational and sequential circuits. Today I will be covering the module 1 part of this subject. The main objectives of this module 1 is to understand what is digital system. Then we will be covering the basic parts of Boolean algebra and binary logic. Then the basic <coughs> components of binary system are basic logic gates. So, we will learn more uh, regarding the basic logic gates and then we will understand few theorems to uh, how to uh, minimize the given problem statement to get the uh, cost effective circuit. Let us start. In digital system, we call this current age as digital age because everything is getting digitized now. So, that is why this subject is very uh, important to understand how this digital system is getting evolved. The digital system is basically used in communication, business transactions, traffic control, spacecraft guidance, medical treatment, like almost every aspect of our life is covered by this digital system. To understand the basic operation of digital, each digital module, it is necessary to have the basic knowledge of digital circuit and the logical function. So that is why we are, I will be covering in detail uh, the digital, the basics of digital system. To understand the digital system, first we need to understand the binary logic. So we have in binary logic, we have only two values possible that is 0 and 1. Like uh, in general when we know when we deal with the digital uh, uh, decimal system where we have numbers from 0 to 9. So that is why we call we have 10 possible values so we call it as decimal system. Like in binary by means 2. So that is why in binary system we have only two possible values th th those are 0 and 1. Sometimes these 0 and 1 are also referred as true and false and also high and low. So there are uh, and this binary logic also we have few operations which we can operate on these binary variables. So, these binary operations are, we have three binary operations and or and not. Okay. I will be covering in detail how these operations can be uh, operated on these binary variables. And then we have binary logic consists of binary variables and set of logical operators. So, the binary expression will contain the binary variables and then binary operators. So, I will be discussing this in more detail and these are the basic components of the binary system that is and or not gates. Okay. So, these three gates represent the three binary operations of the binary logic system that is and or not. Now, we will discuss these uh, about the operations and about these logic gates in more detail over the board. In this binary logic system, 
we have variables which can have maximum of two values that is 0 and 1 and we have few operators. Now let us understand when I say a variable, the variable we can refer it as a single character. I can refer it as x, y, a, b, etc. So the variable is referred using these uh, names. Okay, I can give any names to the variables. Then we have operators. There are three basic op operators on this binary in this binary logic system. That is not and or. This not is represented by either overbore or tilde operation or a cap operation, a cap expression with the variable. For example, if I have to write x bar, I can uh, not of x, I can write it this way or x bar or even I can write it this way. Then let us look at the AND operation. AND operation is a very simple operation that is represented by dot. How to express the AND operation is if I want to have the A and X and Y is represented using X dot Y or sometimes even we eliminate that dot and we just represent it as x, y. The OR operation, the OR operation is represented by plus. This OR operation, if I have this A or B, then that is represented using A plus B. Now, let us understand when I say NOT operation, what will be the output? When I, when I do the AND operation on X and Y or, or operation on A on B, what will happen to the output? So basically, when we are representing this binary logic system, we represent all these operations using truth table. Your truth table consists of number of columns and rows. Each column will contain the variable, input variables and output variables. And each row consists of all the possible values for all the input variables and the possible output for the given operation. So let us understand this by using the truth table. table for NOT gate. This NOT, NOT operation will work on single variable. When we have a single variable, how many possibilities will be there that we are going to mention in the truth table. So the truth table for the NOT gate would look like this. So this is X and this is the output column Y. So this X can have possibly two values because we are talking about the binary logic system. So the possible value for 0, uh, x is 0 and the another possible value for x is 1. Now we need to understand x is equals, y is equals to x naught okay? or naught of x. We call this expression as y is equals to naught of x. So for this, if I have to draw the truth table, I have to mention all possible combinations of the input. In this case, as we have only one input variable, there are two possibilities, 0 and 1. Now, I have to mention when x is 0, what is the value of y? So according to the definition of the NOT operation, so what it does is whatever the value of x, it will change to another value. So the NOT operation is if the value of x is 1, the output is going to be 0. If the value of x is 0, the output it will change to 1. 
so now the y value which is not of x when x is 0 the y value becomes 1 similarly when the value of x is 1 the y value will become opposite to that that is equal to 0 so this not operation is uh, what it does is it will inverse it will inverse the given value if the value of x is 0 it will make it 1 if the value of x is 1 it will make it 0 i hope you understood now let us understand the truth table for and gate now the expression for and gate is z equal to y and x z equal to y and x in this operation these y and x are input variables and z is the output variable so now we will be having three columns in this truth table y x then z when we have two binary uh, variables how many possibles how many possibility of the input combinations will be there okay to know this we have a ex, uh, expression called if we have n inputs then there will be 2 raised to n rows in the truth table so here because n is 2 because we have two input variables n is equals to 2 so then here we will be having 2 raised to 2 that is equal to 4 rows in this truth table. So, what are the 4 combinations? Okay. When y is 0, x is 0, what is the value of z? y is 0, x is 1. When y is 1, x is 0. When both are 1. Okay. These are the 4 different combinations for the given two inputs now we have to find out what is the value of the output for these given combinations according to the definition of and what and says is the output will be 1 when all the inputs are 1 so what does that mean is when all the inputs are high only then your output is going to be high that means here are all the inputs are high no so this will be zero here all the inputs are not high because this is zero it is low so it is also zero here also both the inputs are not one so this also will be zero here both the inputs are one so the output is going to be one so this is going to be the truth table of and gate so now if you by the definition okay it's very clear that when all the inputs okay here now we have only two in we have taken only two inputs so we are talking about both the inputs if both the inputs are one or high or true then only then the output will be high uh, or true or one so otherwise okay if any of the input is zero then the output is going to be zero now let us understand the OR gate. So the OR is represented as Y plus X. The symbol for OR gate is OR operation is plus. So here also we are having two input variables. So the truth table is going to uh, consist of four rows construct the truth table for the OR gate. So, this is y, x and then z. So, what does the definition of OR says? OR says if either of the input is high, if either of the input is 1, then the output will be 1. So, again we will be having the same combinations here 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So here is there any one we have no so that is why the output is going to be zero here do we have one yes 
this x is high. So, the output is going to be high. Here, one of the input is high. So, again the output is going to be high. When both the inputs are also high, then also the output will be high. So, this is going to be the truth table of OR gate. So, what does it say is, when one of the input is 1 or all the inputs are 1, then the output will be 1. That is the operation of OR gate. I hope you understood. Now, so these are the basic operations okay, defined in logical system. To realize these uh, basic operations, we have a specific circuits called NOT gate, AND gate, OR gate. Okay. So, now these all these gates are realized into one symbol. Okay. Th these are represented using symbols. So, let us understand what is the symbol of NOT gate. So, NOT gate is represented uh, with a simple triangle followed by a circle. So, here this will be the input. Okay. At this end, the input will be given and this is going to be the output where the output will be taken from. So, if the given input is 0, the output will be 1. That is what we have to realize, uh, that is what we need to understand using this truth table. Similarly, this AND operation is uh, performed by logical gate called AND gate. So, the representation of this AND gate is something like this. Because this AND gate takes more than one input, so that is given here x, y and the output is going to be z. So, what this z represents is x into y or x and y. The symbol of AND gate is this one. Then the OR gate is represented using the symbol, it is something like this. I hope you got the symbols of all these three gates and also these are realized using the truth tables. Okay. Now, we will be looking at the basic theorems. Okay. So, when we have this binary logic system and when we have these expressions using AND and OR, we can have, uh, we can write the complex expressions. So, when we have these complex expressions, so uh, basically all these expressions are finally will be uh, converted into electronic circuits. So, the basic motive behind understanding this basic theorems or Boolean algebra is to minimize the uh, design of the circuit, minimize the design of the circuit and also minimize the cost of the circuit design. So, that is why it is very important to understand the basic Boolean algebra and also the basic theorems which will convert, which will convert the given expression into sim uh, simplest form. So, let us understand about the Boolean algebra and then its theorems. Again, this Boolean algebra consists of multiple variables and then uh, the set of operators. The basic operators what we have seen, using that only we, we are going to construct the Boolean expression. Okay. So, now we will understand, uh, for example, uh, example of an expression is going to be uh, z equal to x plus y into a. Just as an example, it can be any expression can be uh, uh, expressed in terms of Boolean algebra. Now, to understand this Boolean algebra, we have so many theorems. So, let us look at uh, all of these theorems one by one. 
So first thing we have identity theorem. What does this identity theorem says? There is one identity value, okay. There, there is one identity value with, with which, okay, that identity value depends on the operator, okay. So every identity value will be associated with the operator. So the output is going to be another value. So what do I mean to say is x plus 0 equal to x. So this is the first theorem. So this is also called as identity theorem because 0 is the identity value with respect to or operation. So that is the reason when I add 0 to any other value the output is going to be the value which is there in x. Similarly, all of these theorems, whatever we are going to discuss, all of these theorems comes in duality. So what do you mean by duality is, in duality, so we will be having another expression with, if I have or here, the another expression will have and. Okay. So how to get the duality of this is given for any given expression, how to get the duality of that expression is convert or operation to and operation and convert the identity value to another value, yes. So here the another identity theorem is x, so plus is converted to into that is or is converted to and and then 0 is converted to another identity value x plus 1 so x into 1 equal to x. So here the identity value 1 is the identity value with respect to AND gate. Okay. Here 0 is the identity value with respect to OR gate. Okay. I hope you got the clarity. So whatever the theorems we are discussing, all the theorems will come into the duality theorem. Okay. So that means if I have one theorem with respect to or, the similar theorem will be there with respect to and. So how to identify that? So change this or operation to and operation and change the identity values to another identity value. If here I have 0, here it will become 1, here I have 1, it will become 0. Here I have or, it will become and, here I have and, it will become or. So that is what we have to do to get the dual, uh, dual expression for the given any, uh, any given expression. So now similarly, x plus 1 equal to 1 because we know according to the definition of or gate, according to the definition of or gate, if any one of the input is 1, if any one of the input is high, then the output is going to be high. So here, irrespective of the value of x, we have one input as high, so the output will be always high. Similarly, if I have to convert this, to, uh, uh, get the equivalent of this duality of this is x, this is changed to or is changed to and, and then 1 is changed to 0 and this one is also changed to 0. So this is the dual equation of the given expression. Okay. I hope you got this and this is also according to the definition this is also uh, very obvious because if I have and, uh, and operation both the input must be high or both the input must be 1. If I have one input as 0 then definitely the output is going to be 0. That is what this theorem says. Then we have <coughs> idempotent theorem. So that it says if I do x or x, the output is going to be x only. Okay. So all of these theorems, whatever we are discussing today, can be realized or can be verified using the truth table or even using the simplification, a few of the theorems can be um, realized using the simplification method. 
So, x plus x that is x or x equal to x only. If x is 0, both the values are 0. The or operation we know that if both the inputs are 0, the output is 0. If x is 1, both the inputs are 1, then definitely the output is going to be 1. So, can you guess what is the duality of this equation? Yes, it is we do not have any identity values like 0 and 1 in this. So, we have only variable names. What we need to do? We just have to change this OR operation to AND operation. X and X equal to X. So, this is the duality of this given theorem. Then we have this complement complement theorem. So, what this tells is x plus x dash or is always equal to 1. So, what does this mean? x dash means what? Not of x. So, if x is 1, not of x is 0, then the output one of the input is 1. So, the output will be 1. So, in any case, whatever the value of x, either of the input is going to be always high because we have this complement operation here. So, the output is always high when we or the variable and its complement the output will always be high. Similarly, to get the duality of this, this or will be changed to and then x dash then this 1 will be changed to 0. Again this is this sounds obvious, is not it? When one of the value will always be 0, if x is 1, x dash will be 0, if x is 0, then x dash will be 1. So, when any of the input is 1 for AND operation, the output is going to be 0. Uh, sorry, if any of the input is 0, then for the AND operation, the output is going to be 0. So, that is what this theorem tells. So, the next operation is, uh, next uh, theorem is inversion theorem. Can you guess what is the output of this? So, what does this mean is not of x, not of that. Okay. So, it is, it tells that double inversion, double complement. So, when I complement any value two times, I will get the same value, okay, because x double complement equal to x. Once I complement, the value will be changed. Once I complement again, the value will be again get back to the original value. Then we have this commutative commutative theorem. We already know that in arithmetic uh, algebra, we have seen this commutative theorem, associative theorem, distributive laws. So, these all again will apply to the Boolean algebra as well. Okay. In commutative theorem, it says that x plus y is equal to y plus x. So, what does this mean is, however, you interchange the inputs, okay. it does not make any changes in the output. Whether you give x first or y first, it does not matter. The output is going to be x plus y or y plus x, both uh, it is going to produce the same output. Similarly, how to get the duality of this? x y equal to y x. So, I am just omitting the dot here, even sometimes we use this representation without dot just to make you familiarization with this, I am just omitting the dot there. So, now onwards wherever we are using this AND operation, we will be using only x, y without dot. Then we have associative. Associative theorem. 
So, it is very much similar to your arithmetic expressions. What does associative theorem does? x plus y plus z that is x or y or z can also be written as x or y or z. Okay. So, that is what the associative means, is not it? When we have two and operation, okay, whether you and these two first or these two first does not matter. Whatever the output we are going to get with this or this, it is going to be the same. Similarly, how to get the duality of this? All the plus I need to replace with the dot. So, it is going to be x y z equal to x y into z, x y and z. Now, there are few more theorems, distributive laws. I hope uh, this part is clear to you. Now, let us look at few more theorems and then we will also look at uh, how to simplify these uh, Boolean algebraic equations using these theorems. Distributive theorem. Okay. So, what this is, says is x y plus z equal to the similar equation we have in arithmetic. Okay. When we have uh, say this um, or and operation are very much similar to your addition and multiplication operations in arithmetic equations. So, now what this does is x into y plus x into z. Okay. So, that means, I, when we have a uh, and operation after this or, or, or operation, okay. so we can convert it this way. It will uh, become uh, 2 and operation and 1 or operation. Similarly, the duality of this we can get it as okay. So, this kind of operation we does not have in arithmetic expression. When in arithmetic expression, this kind of uh, simplification we does not do. Okay. Distributive law only says this one, okay. but this applies to your Boolean algebra. So, so, we have to keep this in mind because these are going to help us in simplifying the given Boolean expression. Then we have <coughs> absorption. Absorption theorem says that x into x plus y equal to x. Similarly, the duality of this guys these are the theorems, these theorems can be uh, realized or these theorems can be proved okay, using the truth table or using the Boolean circuit. Once, uh, you, once we get the output, then we can verify both the outputs are same. Then we have the next one is D Morgan's law. This D Morgan's law are very important. This De Morgan's law basically talk about the inversion. Okay. So, when I have this x plus y inversion of that, so the output when I convert that into and operation, it is going to be this. 
this is what the de morgan's law says similarly the duality of this if i have x y let me write it here the not of x y which will be x dash plus y dash okay so these de, de morgan's law are also very important so we can prove it using uh, simplification methods or using even the truth table method then there are few more few more laws this is x plus xy equal to x similarly x um x plus y equal to x okay so these are the laws where we'll be using for uh, deriving or simplifying the boolean expression now what is the use of simplification of the boolean expression so when any problem statement is given the same problem statement we are going to express using the boolean algebra once we have this boolean algebra based on this boolean algebra the circuit is going to be built so and that is going to be the final circuit is going to be the solution for the given problem so now why we have to learn about these uh, theorems are these are going to help us to simplify the given expression so the simplified expression means the simplified circuit okay also that means the cost effective circuit so let us uh, understand few of the examples of how we are going to uh, deduce the given circuit into the simplified version of the circuit so next slide next slide so <coughs> so let us take one simple uh, example and also whenever there is a boolean expression then uh, we have multiple operators the question arises is which operator we have to evaluate first so comes the operator precedence so we have basically three operators the operator precedence is uh, your expression is going to contain the parenthesis and operation or operation not operation the <coughs> precedence tells that first is parenthesis the second comes the not gate the third one is and operation the fourth one is the or operation in this order we have to solve we have to uh, evaluate the given boolean expression now let us see how these um, laws are used to simplify the given boolean expression so let us take an example consider we have this boolean expression which is containing three basic <coughs> variables the variables can be in any form the variables can be directly or the variables can be in its complement form yes so if you look at this here we have x in a complement form that is x dash and then y dash y is in its complement form then we have z then in this expression the next term we call this as term okay in each term is containing the variables basically uh, with the and operations the variables can be in any of its forms regular form or complement form so this is another term and this is another term which is containing only two 
variables. Now let us look at this. If I have to realize this using gates, if I have to realize this using gates, then I need uh, multiple levels of gate design, design circuits. Then here, if I have to do this, I need AND gate with three inputs or consider will not have three input AND gate. In that case, we will be designing it using only two input AND gate and we have X dash, Y dash and then we need another AND gate. This is Z. So, to get one term, I need minimum of two AND gates. Similarly, this is realized using x, y dash, here I will be getting another term and just with another AND gate will be getting the third term. Okay. So, term 1 will be getting here x dash, y dash, z, here I will be getting x dash y, y dash and here this is only z and the output of this is going to be this and here we will be getting x y dash and this input is z, here we will be getting x y dash z and the output of this gate is going to be y z. Now, the next task is ORing all these terms. So, I need one OR gate. Then the final output of this is going to be the given expression that is equal to f. If you look at this diagram, 3, 4, 5, 6, minimum of 6 gates or even if we do not have 3 input OR gate, again we need one more OR gate, at least we need 7 gates. Okay. So, now let us understand if I simplify this equation, so what will happen, what circuit I do need and how to minimize this to minimize any given Boolean expression we are going to make use of the theorems what we have learned previously. So, here first let us look at these two terms. Okay. So, we have to identify what are the common uh, variables, uh, common variables and it forms available in these two terms. If we observe, we have this y dash z here and here also we have this y dash z. So, what we can do is, we can take out this common as y dash z and then what will remain here is x dash plus x. Then we, we know according to the, let me complete this, according to the inversion theorem, if any variable is odd with it, its inversion okay, with its complement value, then the output is going to be 1. So, it is going to be y dash z into 1 because the output of this is going to be always 1. Then we have this y z, the third term as it is. Now again we got this as y, y dash z plus y z. So, again we need to identify are there any common terms in these two common uh, variables uh, in these two terms. Yes, we do have in this. So, z and then what remains here is. So, here to get this common z we are using the distributive laws. So, again ok, uh, again according to the complement theorem y plus y dash is going to be always 1. So, the final output, the simplified version of this equation is going to be z. Then how many gates I, do I need? 
to implement this or to realize this equation. Yes, you are right, we do not need any gates here because I just have to give z, I need to pass that as to the output. I hope you understood this. Similarly, using all of these laws, we can simplify any of the given expression. Okay. So, here the expression is very simple. So, the realization of that expression into a logical circuit is going to be maybe simple in this particular example. But when you look at the uh, complex uh, expressions which are having more than few inputs, then it becomes very difficult to design the circuit for the given expression. So, that is the reason we need to simplify before we get into the circuit design. Thank you, thank you for listening to this class and uh, some problems I have uh, mentioned in the exercise slide. So, I, uh, I hope you solve that using the uh, theorems what we have learned in this today's class. Thank you.